Hi, this is Pastor Philip Nelms of Renaissance Christian Fellowship, and I want to personally welcome you to our podcast channel. We would be honored for you to like and share our podcast channel on your preferred podcast outlet and social media. Thanks for taking time to listen, and I pray you are blessed by today's message. Please stay tuned to the end of the podcast where you can find additional information about this ministry and our teaching resources. I hope you enjoy the message. If you want to follow along tonight, we're going to start in Isaiah chapter 9, and this will be King James Verse 7 is really where we're heading. I'm going to read verse 6 first. Verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of course, we know this is talking about Jesus. Verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David... And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let me read it one more time from God's word. It's a little easier to understand. His government and peace will have unlimited growth. He will establish David's throne and kingdom. He will uphold it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The Lord of armies is determined to do this. In the last few services that we had, we talked a little bit about end times things. We're going to shift gears a little bit tonight. We talked about what it's going to look like when Jesus Jesus returns and sets up his millennial reign on the earth. Millennium just means a thousand years. But what his church does in the earth right now is preparing for that soon return. Uh, We're told that we will rule and reign with him. And that's not really something that's just a future event. We're to be doing that now. We've been given dominion and authority in the earth, so we're to rule and reign in his behalf right now as his ambassadors. So we aren't waiting for his return to start serving and ruling. We we do that now. Years ago, maybe, maybe 20 years ago, I was out cutting the grass at the house on a Sunday afternoon right after church using a push mower. It was in the summer. I just remember it was really hot, and so I had my shirt off. I was uh, working down by the road near the mailbox, and uh, because I wasn't as fat back then as I am now, I wasn't as embarrassed about people driving by. But I just remember while I was cutting the grass, I heard the Holy Spirit speak this phrase in my heart. And he said, my kingdom is an ever-increasing kingdom. My kingdom is an ever-increasing kingdom kingdom. And that truth that the Lord planted in my spirit 20 years ago, which I just read to you, comes out of Isaiah 9. It's now part of my spiritual foundation. It was revelation to me. And that truth needs to, it it must get down on the inside of everyone that calls Jesus Lord if you expect to succeed at what he has assigned you to do on the earth. And yes, every one of us has, has assignments. None of us came here just by accident. There's a book in heaven with your name on it, written about you and the things that you were called to do before you ever showed up. So we all have assignments here. And if you're going to succeed in the earth, you need to understand this truth about the kingdom. The kingdom is an ever-expanding and an ever-increasing kingdom. Walking this out, walking out this truth in the earth is what's going to help you and me hear from Jesus the words, well done, on the judgment day. We must understand that the Lord always has increase on his mind at all times. His kingdom is and always will be an ever-increasing, ever-growing, and an ever-expanding kingdom. So there will never be a time when it will slow down or it will decrease. So don't get your eyes off on things on the earth. Don't let, them, don't let them tell you that Christ and the body of Christ is decreasing and passing away. Even if it's slowed down, I promise you, he's going to see to it that it increases. So when things around us are not increasing or growing, or, or maybe they're even shrinking, we can know for certain that that is not of him. When God ordained ministries fail to grow or when people leave that is not of him 
when finances are shrinking instead of growing, that is not of Him. When our personal service to Him and His kingdom begins to shrink, begins to decrease, when our giving begins to shrink, when our prayer life begins to shrink and draw back, that is not of Him. That is going in the opposite direction from the way that Jesus is walking. And if our goal is to walk alongside Jesus in the earth, then we will have to walk in the same direction that he's going. And that is always in the direction of increase. Any other direction is moving farther away from him and is moving farther away from his kingdom. He is not moving farther from us. We're walking away from him. Okay, so it is important to know and to understand this truth because we don't want the devil to lie to us and trip us up with thoughts that somehow this shrinking, this decreasing is somehow the mysterious, unknowable will of God for our lives. First of all, his, his will is known. He, he will make his will known if you ask him. So it's not unknowable. If you don't know what you just haven't asked. But you shrinking, you falling back, you not advancing, this is not his will. Kingdom increase is his only will. And tonight I'll give you some more scripture to back that up. If we don't understand this foundational principle of increase, then you won't recognize if there may be an assignment of the enemy that's working against you, working against us. And those assignments are designed by the enemy to slow things down, to cause things to diminish and to generally decrease. Decrease is like a cuss word to Jesus. He does not do decrease. So when we see decrease begin to creep in, all right, that's our clue that we're going to need to fight the good fight of faith. All right, that's when we're going to need to use that authority. We're ruling and reigning with him. That's when we're going to need to use some of that dominion and rebuke the assignment of demons that has come against you. We're to use our prayers to petition heaven for help and to bring increase. We're to ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom as to why things are happening like they're happening. If it's not his will, why is it happening? And so when he shows us, our responsibility is to to make whatever necessary adjustments there are to clean it up and get it going back in the right direction. In other words, usually that means there's something going on where we are going to have to take a look in the mirror. If there's any adjustments that are needed, it's always going to be with us. It's it's never with him. He's never wrong. He's perfect. He's never going to change. If anybody's ever going to change, it's going to be us. And so any time that things are in a decreasing cycle, and especially if it's something you know that the Lord told you to do, you, you need to ask him why, because there is no failure in him. The failure is always on the human side. The failure is going to be in us. The failure is going to be in his church. Maybe there's something individually that you're going to have to address. Again, that's the looking in the mirror with him part. Maybe it's not about you. Maybe it's about others who are around you. Okay, Maybe others in the body of Christ Maybe they're not pulling their weight. Like you can go in the right direction and everybody else is going the other direction. You're not going to make much progress. You don't have unity. There will be no victory without unity. There will be no victory without unity. So if there's something going on like that, then there needs to be correction. All right, so we start with us. Do I need correction, Lord? Do I need to check my heart? And if it's beyond that, if it's somebody that's within your sphere of influence, that you are authorized to correct, you may have to deal with some things. The point is we are all collectively the body of Christ, but each one of us individually has job assignments and responsibilities in the body. The body of Christ is probably the most underutilized gift of the Lord in the earth. Okay, most of his body, the church, is sitting in neutral. Or they think they're sitting in neutral. But the truth is, there really is no neutral in the earth. There's no neutral in the kingdom. Either you are increasing or you are decreasing. There's actually no setting still. 
there's this modern day political mindset that has been creeping into the church. And it's this socialistic mindset. People think that, you know, I'm going to go to a big church, lots of people, lots of money. The church government is going to be like our our mom and daddy. They're going to be our parents. The church is just going to take care of us while we sit in the pews, right? And, and that is if we decide to show up, uh, if we aren't too busy, if we didn't have other plans for that day already. That's what's crept into the body of Christ. So instead of using our time, instead of using our talents, instead of using our finances to increase and to support the body and to increase the kingdom, we think that somebody else will do it for us. No one else can do your assignment but you. And so if you don't do it, there will be lack and there will be a hole in the body. You will hinder the progress of the kingdom. But we think somebody more prosperous than me will do all the giving, and I'll, I'll just receive the benefits. Um, but that's, that's deception. Okay, the Scripture says you give, and it will be given unto you. All right, so giving is going to always precede receiving. Okay, and this is, this is kingdom. This isn't just, don't think I'm just talking about money. Money's included in this. This is a big part of it. But this is not about money. It's also very much about your time. It is about service and assignment in the body of Christ. The Lord has had this phrase kind of rolling around on the inside of me for the last month or so now. And the phrase was spiritual moochers. Spiritual moochers. Uh, have you ever gone out to eat with a group of friends and there's always that one person that forgets their wallet? They're, they're always like, hey, uh, hey, I'll, I'll catch you next time. But next time never comes. You know, the bill comes and they've got alligator arms. They can't, you know, they can't quite reach it. Okay, that, that's, that's what we call a moocher, right? They're always looking for the angle to get something free. Well, there's a whole lot of that that's going on in the body of Christ, And this is what I felt like he said to me today. It's just very clear. He said that this is very displeasing to the Lord. All right, It's not funny to him. The Lord loves us very much. He died for us. His love for us is unfailing. But sometimes he can be hurt and disappointed by our actions. Just like natural parents get put out with their children. It doesn't mean you don't love them. But sometimes they just make you a little bit crazy. Jesus said in the word, the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, draws back in faith or draws back, period, my soul will have no pleasure in him. Drawing back is just another phrase or word for for decrease. You call it backsliding. And Jesus does not like that. This is actually his, if he has a trigger, it's this. He actually hates it when we have taken ground for the kingdom And then we turn around and we give that ground back up to the enemy. It doesn't matter what area it's in. If it's not increased, he doesn't like it. All right, it could be in our financial giving or it could be in our serving. It could be personal backsliding into sin. The body of Christ is always to be moving forward and increasing, just like your faith should always be increasing. In Luke 17, 5, the apostles said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. And that's a good prayer. That's a good prayer. It's a prayer of increase. Jesus wants us to be increasing in faith. But that increase needs to look like a manifestation. It's an increased manifestation in all areas of our lives and in our churches. Okay, increased faith should be visible in increased results. All right, it's, it's not just a theological thing. It's not just a, a state of mind thing. Faith is to be used in action to change things. Increased faith should bring increase in manifestation. Decrease is not kingdom. Decrease is not rewarded. Jesus expects every one of us to keep this mindset of increase all the time. For instance, Jesus said our, our giving, back to money, your giving is blessed. Well, that means you have to give him something for him to increase it. It's like math. If you multiply something by zero, you get zero. There has to be something given. It says give and it shall be given unto you and more 
shall be given. It's increase. Uh, these, these are the words of Jesus, not mine. So that's the principle of kingdom increase. An increase requires a seed. It requires a seed. With giving, you, you never want to decrease in your giving. All right? You don't want to go backwards. You don't want to achieve a certain level of giving and then pull back from it. And usually that's in fear, right? Fear of lack. I'm not going to have enough. It looks tight this month. You never want to do that. Not only should you not pull back your percentage of giving, but I believe that the Lord gave Lynn and I this revelation a couple of years back that we should always be looking actually to increase in our percentage of giving. We started at the 10th, but we moved on from there, okay? We, we got this revelation just several years ago. The Lord spoke to me when we were in Sarasota. We were at the, the, the Greater Faith Conference. It was the first night. Had not begun yet. We were just sitting uh, in the seats, sitting there just looking around, minding my own business, not thinking anything. And I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And he said, I want you to increase your giving. All right. He gave me a, he gave me a certain amount. And, yeah, we're heading back there to that conference next week. Please be in prayer for us for that. But we were all already, long-term, we had been tithers, okay? Tithers means tenth. We're talking about percentages. But plus, we had increased that level a few percentage points more already as offerings. And we did that across the board for all of our income, both personal and ministry. So if, if you give here, if you tithe and you give offerings here, just know that a tithe and offerings are constantly going out from here to others and other churches and other ministries outside the body. We don't hoard here. It's, it's, it flows through. So most people are familiar with Malachi chapter 3 uh, where there's this discussion about tithes and offerings. The prophet Malachi is rebuking Israel. He's rebuking the people, or God is actually rebuking the people, excuse me, through the mouth of the prophet Malachi. And God said to, to the land, you're robbing me. And he said, it's in tithes and offerings. Tithes is what, the tenth. But he said, and offerings. Now, usually we drop that part off and we just talk about tithing, but God didn't drop it off. Most people in the church, from, from what I see, from what I read, most people haven't gotten to the point of being faithful even with the tenth yet, much less offerings that are over and above that. But again, the Lord spoke to, to me in that meeting, that first meeting at the conference uh, several years ago, and he said, I, I want you to in increase your giving by another 2.5% for that year. And I told Lynn, and, uh, and we swallowed hard, but that's exactly what we did. I, I know the voice of the Lord when I hear him. And when we did it, when we obeyed, we began to see substantial increase, both in our finances for the ministry and personally. So what we've done is, is we've kind of made it our regular thing at the beginning of every year, and we've already done it this year, is that we get together and we talk to one another and we pray about our giving for that year, and we decide at the beginning how much we're going to increase our giving for the year. And we've already done it for 2023. We have started giving at a higher percentage than we did last year. Offerings that have come in already, they've already gone back out at a higher percentage this year. We increased. Our ultimate goal is to reach the place where the percentage that we give away every year exceeds the percentage that we keep for ourselves. Now, I didn't say you have to do that. Okay, this is something I believe the Lord has shown me. Uh, this is revelation to us. But if you're in a business partnership, controlling interest of that business begins, you know, at 51%. We're looking forward to the day where, you know, we can say that Jesus has controlling interest in our finances. You know, if you have a million dollar, if you have a billion dollar salary or annual income, you know, you can live very comfortably on 49% of that, right? Well, getting to that place, and, you know, we're talking about vision. That's big vision for the future. We're not there. Don't get me wrong. It begins with being faithful where you are, and then you increase it when he leads you to. The title of the message tonight is just simply increase. You have to faithfully steward whatever he's given you to do on the small level, and don't draw back from it whenever times get tough. The scripture says that the one who is faithful in little shall be made ruler over much. This is kingdom principle. And so this is not just about money. 
This is kingdom principle for all things. Increase is our kingdom mandate. And of the increase of his kingdom, there shall be no end. I guess in, uh, this is not in my notes, but in terms of physics, that would be acceleration. You know, there's speed, right? Speed, if you're going 55 miles an hour, you're not increasing. You're maintaining. Acceleration is going 55, 60, 65, 70. You continually are going faster and faster and faster. That's what he's talking about. Okay, so the body of Christ is never to draw back. That's, that's every area. So we are to stay faithful to what he's told us to do, and we should pray and look for ways to increase it and grow it. We need to be faithful in any assignment, especially ministry assignment, that he's told us to do until and unless he says move on from that. Okay, sometimes ministry assignments will come and go. He will clearly let you know when something has come, is coming to an end or has come to an end. Sometimes you have been faithful in an assignment, so he is promoting you to something newer and something larger. And obviously to do that, you need to vacate your old assignment. And that will make room for someone else to come in and steward that in, in your place, okay? But that's a different scenario altogether than just getting discouraged and quitting because things get hard, okay? And this is really what we have to watch out for. The Lord blesses what we give Him, and He blesses what we are faithful to do for Him in His kingdom. Okay, so faithfulness is an overlying principle with this, with this principle of increase. All right, some people will feel like, you know, as long as they're at church and they're giving money, then they bear no other responsibilities. But you do. You have a place in the body, and that includes a place to serve. One of the reasons we still meet in person, we have church meetings where people actually meet the face-to-face. It's not just online. Thank God for the online stuff. But you can't serve in an online meeting. Okay, you can serve with people. Serving includes people. It's not just sitting in a pew and eating whatever the pastor is feeding you. When you grow up, you know, you learn how to get up and help serve other people. You will go from babyhood to adulthood. And when you do, that means you are using your new knowledge, your new graces to now, you now help feed and care for other babies. This is about not staying a baby. This is about growing up. It's about increasing. Nobody's born and they stay a one-year-old, right? It, nature even tells you, you grow, you increase. Unfortunately, the church is full of people that may be 60 and 70 years old, but they're like two-year-olds on the inside. They've never spiritually matured. All right, and part of that maturity has to do with service, has to do with you getting out of the pew because you've been there long enough, and then you helping some others. And when the cycle doesn't happen, you get decrease. You get decrease. This is the thing we, you always have to watch out for. In the church, unfortunately, we have a significant failure to launch problem. We have people that come in, get saved, begin to, begin to feed, begin to grow, But they never launch. They never get out of the pew. They never begin to serve. They never step in to what God has for them. So they get trained, but they never use it. Well, that's a waste. That's a waste of resources and talent. The reason many people get dissatisfied with their church, and and often they'll walk away from it, is because they did not make that transition from being served to serving. Jesus said, it's more blessed to give than receive. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve, up, serve others. And he said, you, you follow me. Like, I'm your example. That's, uh, Mark 10, 44, 45 says, and whoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That was the example. The way up, the way to grow, the way to get increase is to serve. That means stepping down a little bit. Think of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Some of them did like that. You know, they said, Jesus, no, I I wouldn't dare have you wash my feet. And he said, well, if I don't, you have no part in me. Well, that's the example. 
it means you're going to have to humble yourself. Jesus said, take up your cross daily, follow me. So when you move from just the receiving mode and into giving mode, or from being served to the serving mode, that's when you really begin to see the hands of the Lord begin to move on your life. If things have been stagnant, look for this. You cannot stay in that pew forever. You cannot stay a baby forever. You will start to dry up and decrease if you do not make the shift at the right time. You can make it too soon, by the way. We also make that mistake. We put babies in charge of things they had no, char- no business being in charge of. So there's a right time. You shouldn't rush people, but you need to know when it's time. It, just in this group, there, you know, there's many of you who have been a part of this, or you sat under my teaching now, by my math, five to six years. We're school of the spirit, but even college shouldn't be more than like four or five years. And then you're, you should be transitioning into at least internships, right? I kind of felt like, you know, this is just, I'm not going to do this, but the thought, thought was, you know, I ought to just get a bunch of uh, diplomas, print out some phony diplomas, and hand them all out to you, right? And say, you know, here you go, congratulations, you've graduated, okay, but you're not graduating and leaving, you're graduating to service. You're getting out of your seat so someone else can sit in that seat. So there comes a time when you're, if you're in the Army, right, your basic training should end, and then you enter service to the kingdom. All right, for the Army, you, you, you're going to serve the kingdom of the United States of America. We get to serve a higher and better kingdom. And so you and Jesus are the ones that have to come to terms together about this and about that next move and what it looks like for you. Don't wait for your pastor to come to you and ask you. Don't wait for somebody to come and draft you. You've already been drafted. You need to be looking for what your assignment is. If you don't know, it's okay to go to your leadership and, you know, just just ask where you can help. Or if you see something that needs doing, just do it, you know. But when people don't make this transition, what happens is they begin to grow cold and dissatisfied And usually they end up walking away from their church if they don't change it. And let me tell you, always they blame their minister. Well, you know, Pastor Nims just doesn't seem to have it like he once did. You know, he was pretty anointed and some stuff was going on. But lately it's just, it's been a little dry. Okay, well, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe I've decreased. But it may be the problem is staring you in the mirror. All right. So, yeah, uh, but you say, I can't. Mm, I'm busy. I'm really busy, really busy. Yeah, everybody in America is busy. I ain't got time to do that. I ain't got time to serve. Uh, That's why we pay you, Pastor, to do everything. Okay. You know, I get that you're busy. But if you weren't busy, then it wouldn't be a sacrifice. All right? Jesus blesses things greatly when it costs you something. Jesus had this issue in his ministry as well. He had people that would follow him, but they they wouldn't make that transition. They would be disciples. They would be students, but they didn't make the transition to, to leaders. So it was going on with Jesus. It's no surprise that, you know, the church has the same issues today. In John 6, verses 65 to 68, Jesus was speaking to the crowds. He says, therefore, I say unto you, no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And verse 66 says, From that time many of his disciples went back, and they walked with him no more. Okay, was that increase? No. All right, obviously that's decrease. So that was not the will of Jesus. He wasn't trying to run them off. And then Jesus turned and said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? And then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so that's where actually we need to come to, just like Simon Peter. You need to come to the place where you go, I think about walking away, but where in the world would I go? Okay. When the temptation comes to walk away, ask yourself, where am I going to go? I have Jesus. I I have eternal life. I have him Walking with me here, I have eternal life in the, in the next age. There literally is nowhere else to go. 
are you really going to go back to the world of sin that he's already delivered you from? How'd that work out? There's only one way that this works successfully. And that way is forward. That way is always in the path of increase with him. It's an unfortunate truth that people on the earth walk away from the Lord Jesus every day. They abandon him. They abandon their callings. They abandon their assignments. People will stop giving. People will abandon fruitful ministries. Well, if you, if you read the parable of the sower, you know, three, uh, the, the sower sowing the seed into the soils, the soils represented the people's hearts. Well, three out of four of those soil types uh, or people's hearts, they ultimately did not yield any fruit. One of those soil types, the scripture says it had tares in it. Tares is just weeds. It had weed seed in it along with the fruit seed, the good seed. But Jesus said the tares, they would grow up. And what they were, they were the cares of the world. Uh, It was the deceitfulness of riches. It was the lust for other things that would grow up with the fruit and it would choke it out. And so the person became unfruitful. In other words, they were producing fruit at first, but they got drawn away by the world and they stopped producing. They obviously decreased. There was another soil type. The, the word calls it rocky soil. And this was the person who was said to not have endurance. So the seed sprang up in them. They would begin to increase very quickly. But when things would get hard, when persecution would come, when the heat got turned up, they would, they would wither, meaning they would, they would draw back, they would go back to where they came from, and they would become unfruitful. Again, that's a decrease. That is not kingdom. All right, so we, we all have these temptations, okay? So that means as, as a Christian, you are going to have to work to keep the soil of your heart clean and prepared with the Lord so that you continue producing and increasing. I would imagine almost every person has some rocky soil. Almost every person has some weed there. Almost every person has some hard areas. And then every person probably has some good places. Well, it's only the good soils that are going to produce. So we need to be working on dealing with those other areas of our hearts that are going to keep us from producing and increasing. Keep your hearts clean. And how are you going to do that? Well, you're going to have to get with the Lord. You're going to have to spend some, some mirror time, some time in prayer, some time in the Word, asking Him. Say, Lord, I mean, David said, search me and try me, oh, oh God, see if there's any wicked way in me. You know, if it's rocky soil, it's, it's, it's wicked, all right? If it's tares, it's wicked. It's not going to increase for the kingdom. So that means occasionally you're going to have to look in the mirror. You're going to have to take an assessment of where you are with Him, how you're doing, Okay. We always want to judge ourselves regularly with God. Okay, judging yourself is not, it's not bawling and squalling and beating yourself up. That's kind of just religious nonsense. Judging is, is just done in a quiet place with the Lord. It's, it's done soberly, uh, evaluating yourself with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is going to show these things to you. It's not about you beating yourself up. The Lord points these things out. So when you come to him, he, he will not crush you for it. He will just correct you wherever you need correcting, just like a good father corrects his children. Okay, so as, as long as, as we're in the earth, as long as we're walking with him, if we do this regularly with him, and I mean lifelong, and you are willing to make the necessary adjustments, it's one thing for, to ask him to show you what's going on, but when he does, it's now going to be on you to make some changes. It's not just enough to know you're going to have to make an adjustment. And if you'll do that and you do it regularly, then on that final day of accounting with Jesus, you will most assuredly hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful. In business, you know, it was always nice when I would occasionally get to work with someone who was both good and faithful. But that's a rare commodity. There are a lot of people out there who are smart and they are, and they are talented, but they are unfaithful. And so you get to working with them and they would just leave you in, in the lurch. And so you would end up having to finish it. 
Maybe you had group projects in school. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Sometimes you get faithful people and they'd hang, hang in with you to the end, but they actually weren't very good at their job. So still most of the work would fall back on, on me, you know. But the best assignments were with people who were good at what they did and also you knew you could count on them in crunch time. All right, but I'm just telling you, those people are as rare as unicorns. And so when it comes to our service in the kingdom, faithfulness and increase has always got to be our guiding principle in what we do. Jesus is looking for increase. I I didn't include it tonight, but if you remember the parable of the talents, the judgment for those three people was based on increase. And two of them increased, one of them did not, right? So that's where the, the, he said, you're wicked, you're slothful. You didn't bring any increase at all. And he actually said it wouldn't have been too hard. You could have just put that money in the bank. I would have counted that. You would have been fine. So we should be praying, Lord, increase us, all right? Lord, increase our faith. Lord, increase, increase me in my, in my finances so I can increase my giving. But usually it's, Lord, I will increase my giving, and then he'll increase the finances. And sometimes the prayer needs to be, hey, Lord, I repent for, for decreasing. You know, I repent for taking my eyes off the prize. Or, hey, I repent, Lord, for having this status quo mentality. You know, I, I reached a point and I thought, mm, that's pretty good. Let's coast. Okay, I think I sent something out accidentally to y'all. I was writing notes to myself. But this thing about comfort, comfort is the enemy of increase. The word decrease is like a cuss word to Jesus. It's just not in his vocabulary, not in a good way. So there are these principles that he has put in his word about increase that sometimes you will hear called prosperity. The essence of prosperity or prospering is that things are living, they are flourishing, they are increasing. So you can use prosperity and and, and increase really interchangeably. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 says this, Honor the Lord with your substance. And I wrote, that's body and money. This is substance too. And with the first fruits of all your increase. So will your barns be filled with plenty, and your presses will burst out with new wine. Okay, a lot of people have heard those scriptures, and they stop there. But if you keep reading, the next one say, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, even as a father, the son in whom he delights. Correction is a blessing because it gives us another opportunity to make adjustments and to get things right. If you are faithful with your, with your giving, money, okay, and the Bible says that is the first test, then ask him, Lord, am I being faithful in my service? Everybody's busy. I gave you testimony um, a few teachings back about how when the Lord called me to go to Bible college, I delayed going for a whole semester because I thought, I said, Lord, I'm too busy. I would not have time for it. But when I repented and I made the adjustment and I obeyed him, Jesus opened up my time. It was supernatural. Okay, your seed is time in that circumstance. You giving your time is giving him a seed. All right, do you want the Lord to get involved with your time? Do you want him to help free up more time for you? Or give him a seed of your time for the kingdom and then watch him do some miracles in your schedules. Remember the scripture says the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich with no sorrow added to it. Well, sorrow, there's some rich people who work day and night and they have no rest. But the Lord can cause your schedule to shift so you have more resources and more time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. It may not be overnight. It may take time for things to shift and happen that way. But if you will use your time as a seed and pray for him to free up more time for you, he will. I will speak on his behalf and say he will do it. I can say that because he's already said it in his word. Whatever you give up for the sake of the kingdom will be increased back to you as a reward for faithfulness. 
Now, some people don't like preachers who say things like this because people like no-fault religion. Like, if something's going bad, it's somebody else's fault. But it's never anybody else's fault. It, it's, it's always, look in the mirror. Where are we? What are we doing? But this is what Jesus said. He, this is not me. All right, so Mark chapter 10, verses 28 through 30. It says, then Peter began to say unto him, Lord, we've left all and followed you. And Jesus answered and said, verily, or of a surety, I say unto you, there is no man who has left a house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive, shall is non-negotiable, he shall receive a hundredfold. Now, in this time, meaning in the earth, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions, and in the world to come, eternal life. This teaching, um, this, this happened right after Jesus had encountered the rich young ruler. If you remember, Jesus told the ruler he lacked one thing, and he said, hey, go give your money away. And the ruler went away sad from Jesus because it said he had trusted in his riches. Jesus said that those who trust in their riches will have a hard time entering the kingdom. Kingdom of God is about increase. If you trust the riches and you hold on to the riches, you're not going to let go of them. The scripture says there's, there's those who scatter and increase and those who hold on to stuff, but it tends to poverty or decrease. Anyway, Jesus said, hey, if you trust in your riches, uh, you're going to have a hard time entering the kingdom. When we said that, it made the disciples gasp. They were like, well, how in the world can anybody get into the kingdom? Well, the reason it made, it made them gasp is they weren't broke. They had some stuff. But the difference was trust. What are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your stuff or are you trusting in the Lord? And so then Jesus, what he told them is, if you will give it to me as a seed, if you're willing to walk away from those things that you wanted and do it for my sake and for the kingdoms, then I will reward it back to you both in this life and in the life to come. That's what I just read you. Those were the words of Jesus. Again, some people don't like that. I'm not sure why. But Jesus is fair. And Jesus is just. And because his kingdom is ever increasing, if you choose to decrease for him, if you choose to willingly decrease for his kingdom, he will see to it that you increase. But it's got to be about him and the kingdom. That is also the essence of Matthew six thirty three. Seek first the kingdom and his right way. And then all of those things will be added unto you. We get things backwards. We make it about money. He makes it about kingdom. All right, 1 Corinthians 4, 2. We're, we're almost done here. It says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. We've been given this earth. The earth belongs to, to man. That's what the scripture says. Heaven, even heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. So, in essence, while we're here, we, we own things. We own things. You don't own the tithe, actually. That's the test. But the rest of it, he says, is yours. But we should be treating the things in the earth like we are stewards of them, meaning we are willing to part with them at any point in time if the master asks us for it. Okay, so that means your trust is in Jesus and not your stuff. You don't trust in the money because the scripture says money can grow wings and fly away. But you learn to be generous towards God and you will not lack. The principle is, is there and it doesn't matter what thing is. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about money, if you're talking about land, houses, uh, vehicles, or even your time. All right, the earth has been given to us by Jesus and our time has been given to us by Jesus. And so we really are owners of those things. We have final say in how it gets used, and he's actually not going to override us in that. So this is something that you have to do willingly. A bond servant is someone who willingly signs up to be a slave. So our things have been placed into our hands to do with them as we will. But as bond servants of Jesus, 
we need to always hold very lightly to our things, asking the Lord when and where he may have need of it. But always knowing that whatever you're willing to use and give away for him, he is going to use that very thing to increase you because his kingdom is ever increasing. You cannot willingly decrease yourself for him and his kingdom and not increase. They go hand in hand. All right, this is kingdom truth. Whatever, so, whatever things you sow, that and only that is what you're going to reap. There are going to be people who will rule and reign in, in the earth and in the kingdom to come simply because they were faithful in handling, the scripture says, unrighteous mammon, money. And there's going to be those who are going to suffer and they're, they're going to receive a rebuke of Jesus and, and some loss at the judgment because of their unfaithful handling of money or other resources, or their time. It's about the stewardship of those things. I suggest at the beginning of each year that you have a meeting with yourself and if you're married with your spouse and with the Lord. So two or three, all right? And you should ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do for the kingdom for this new year? And that, that kind of plays into, we, we'll talk Probably the next meeting we meet, we're going to talk about vision lists, okay, because it'll be that time. But on, if you're preparing vision lists, the first thing is, what are you going to do for him? Matthew 6, 33, seek first. The only way you're going to know that is you're going to have to sit down together and discuss it. You, your spouse, and the Lord need to sit down and talk about it. What are you going to do for the kingdom for this year? Decide what you'll give to him, but then you need to be faithful to do it. Okay, do not make the commitment to do something and not keep it. That's even worse, according to the Scripture. So you are to ask him about your service. All right, he's the boss. All right, you don't go in and tell the boss what you're going to do. You go to him and say, boss, what would you have me do? It's real simple. All right, and so you ask him where he wants you to serve in the body. Ask him what you want him to give this year. All right, and everyone can do something. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be a senior pastor, okay? There's something that everyone can do with service. All right, some people are going to be able to do more than others, but there is a shared responsibility in the body. All right, so you need to ask the Lord to show you any areas where you may have slipped back in these things as well. Where have you backslid? Where did you allow the spirit of decrease to infect your thinking? And then make the changes wherever he shows you. This is how we judge ourselves. And Jesus said, if you'll judge yourself, you will not be judged. Okay, the way you don't get judged is you come to him and, and you, you present yourself for judgment and say, I judge myself. And he goes, okay, oh, I won't judge you. Okay, because that's what mature sons and daughters do. Do not ask, do not wait to be asked about service. Ask the Lord. If you see an area of need, volunteer. Graduate in 2023 from sitting in the pew to serving in his kingdom. You know what my plan is for 2023? Increase. So that's my plan. That's my goal. My goal for 2023 is increase because that's what he's looking for. You know what my plan is for, for this ministry this year? It's increase. Okay, but increase starts with us. All right, we have to increase. You've got to increase on the inside, and then you've got to start doing some increased things on the outside. You may have to increase giving. All right, you may have to increase in the use of your time in service. You may have to pray more. Ministry, this ministry or any ministry, will never get where God intends it to be without faithful intercessors praying for it because the enemy is always gunning for it. If we will all be faithful to do whatever he shows us, then increase will come, and it will come quickly because he will anoint it and he will bless it. Amen. Friend, if you've never made Jesus your Savior and Lord, would you please do it today? You can't afford to put it off one more minute. Your eternal destiny depends on knowing Jesus. Whatever situation you may be in, Jesus can take your life and make something beautiful of it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except that he comes through me. And Romans 10, 9 tells us that if we confess with our mouth 
that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. So if you would like to know him, repeat this prayer with me today and really mean it from your heart. Say after me, Jesus, I choose this day to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God, sent to the earth to pay the price for my sin by your death. I believe that you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today in heaven. Please take my life and do something great with it. Friend, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, then today is your birthday. Today is the day that you were born again into eternal life. We suggest that you find a good Bible-believing local church where you can connect with other Christian believers and grow in the Lord. Thanks again for tuning into our podcast. This message has been brought to you today free of charge by the friends and ministry partners of Renaissance Christian Fellowship. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you please consider partnering with us to help send the gospel message to others around the world? For more information on how to donate to this ministry, please visit our Facebook page, www.facebook.com forward slash RCF World, or you may send us an email at contact us at rcfworld.org. Again, that's contact us at rcfworld.org. You may give by debit or credit card directly at paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Again, that's paypal.me forward slash RCF World. Thank you for helping us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world.